Many of today's most popular characters have their roots in the Golden Age. Some are unchanged by time, but others go through an evolutionary process. One character to go through a transformation is the superhero known as the Ghost Rider. In 1949, comic book publisher Vin Sullivan invited writer-artist team of Ray Crank and Dick Ayers into his home. The reason for the invite was purely business. Ayers and Crank had been working on a backup strip called The Calico Kid, which appeared in one of Sullivan's Western titles. Sullivan told the two men that he had an idea to take the strip into a new direction, and on that note, he wanted to share his inspiration with them. The song went yippee ki yay yippee ki yo Ghost Riders in the Sky. The song was first recorded by Stan Jones and his Death Valley Rangers in 1948. A year later, two versions of that song were released and they both became big hits. Burl Ives released a folk version which made it all the way to number 21 in Billboard magazine. A month later, Vaughn Monroe and his orchestra released another version. That version hit number one and was declared by Billboard magazine as the top song of 1949. Sullivan played the song for him a couple of times and while the two men listened intensely. He then gave them some money to go to a movie theater. He told them to go see a Walt Disney cartoon called The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. The movie is made up of two different stories, but Sullivan wanted to watch one story in particular the headless horseman of sleepy hollow this cartoon was based on the well-known washington irving story about a hapless school teacher ichabod crane who was chased on halloween night by a headless horseback specter as the legend goes the headless rider is a hessian officer who lost his head during the american revolution now he haunts the roads looking for a new head to take from some unlucky traveler Frank and Ayers went back to work on the Calico Kid. The strip was a sort of a reverse Superman story with a Western theme. The Calico Kid was a mild-mannered Clark Kennish greenhorn who found himself helping people in distress as he traveled throughout the Old West. When the situation appeared hopeless, the Calico Kid would drop his act and reveal that he was actually lawman Rex Fury. This Clark Kent Superman plot was no stranger to publisher Vin Sullivan. He was the original editor on Superman and Action Comics. He had left DC Comics in the mid-1940s to start up his own comic book line, Magazine Enterprises. He worked in plots and story elements he was familiar with, but the superhero genre was collapsing just as he left DC Comics to start up his own company. Many smaller publishers had made headway by getting out of the superhero business. These publishers experimented with other genres and found great success. Sullivan's first comics were war titles. After establishing a couple of war books, he branched out into romance, funny animal, and the western genre. The western genre turned out to be quite lucrative for magazine enterprises. Tim Holt, a western B-movie actor, licensed his name to Sullivan, and it was in the pages of Tim Holt where the Calico Kid would begin his travels across the Old West. And it was there where the Calico Kid would turn into the Ghost Rider. Tim Holt issue 11 was a changing point. The Calico Kid and his Asian sidekick Sing Song are bushwhacked by a gang of bandits posing as Native American renegades. They're tied up and thrown into a whirlpool. The whirlpool sucks them down into an underground river which leads to a cave. There, instead of turning back into Marshal Rex Fury, the Calico Kid decides to become the Ghost Rider. He dons a ghostly white outfit and goes out and captures the gang. This origin wasn't all that creative or exciting, but the character of the Ghost Rider was. A more in-depth origin was retold when the Ghost Rider rode off into his own title. Everything happened as it did before, but this time the Calico Kid had a vision while he was in the whirlpool. The ghosts of Western legends Wild Bill Hickok, Calamity Jane, and Kit Carson appear and bestow their skills onto the drowning Calico Kid. 
These spirits tell him that he walks between the world of life and death. As a spiritual finale, he ropes a demonic horse which he names Spectre. <laughs> the ghost Rider was an expert gunslinger, mouth thrower, and master of the whip. In addition, he wore a special pair of mirrored goggles that would drive the evildoers mad by seeing the evil in themselves. His adventures pitted him up against bandits, murderers, and monsters. Often, the monsters he battled would be revealed in the end as just another bad guy in a rubber mask. Artist Dick Ayers handled most of the artwork on Ghost Rider. Ayers had his first cartoon strip, Radio Ray, published in military newspapers while he was serving in the U.S. Army Air Corps in 1942. After the war, he did a minor job or two for Dell Publishing. Still a young man, he decided to pursue cartooning as a career. Ayers used his G.I. Bill grant to attend the Cartoonist and Illustrator School in Manhattan. There, he studied under Tarzan artist Bern Hogarth. While taking classes, Superman co-creator Joe Schuster would come in as a guest instructor. He recognized Ayers' talents and recommended that he should pay a visit to his old editor, Vin Sullivan, who had started up his own comic line. Sullivan gave Ayers a break by having him work on some backup strips. His work was rough in the beginning, but under Sullivan's guidance, Ayers turned into a top-notch illustrator. Ayers drew most of the artwork, but from time to time, another amazing young artist would draw Ghost Rider covers. 20-year-old Frank Frazetta was the son of Italian immigrants. At age 8, his parents took him to the Brooklyn School of Fine Arts to meet the master artist and instructor there. This master artist thought it was a joke at first, but when he saw what young Frazetta was drawing, he declared him an artistic genius. Rosetta's first published work was in 1944. He was only 16. By the time he began working for Sullivan, he was a veteran comic book artist and illustrator. Frazetta would work for Sullivan until there was a falling out between Frazetta and writer-editor Ray Crank. Friction between Frazetta and Crank came about over a title called Thunder. Thunder. A Frazetta creation, Thunder, was the story of a pilot who crash lands in the prehistoric world of the Lost Lands. Lost Lands. Lands. Frazetta had drawn three complete stories before Crank took over as editor. Crank did not like the sci-fi concept and changed it into your stereotypical jungle book, basically turning the character into a simple swipe of Tarzan. Frazetta protested, but finished out the remaining stories for the first issue. Afterwards, Frazetta refused all future job offers by Magazine Enterprises. The influence of Frazetta's original concept, though, can be seen in Marvel's Kazar and DC's Warlord. The Ghost Rider would become Magazine Enterprise's number one character. In the early 1950s, both the Western and horror genres were exploding. Interest in the Ghost Rider would motivate the publisher to branch the character out into other titles. Unfortunately, the Ghost Rider had become a victim of the anti-comic book crusade. In 1954, comic book publishers bowed down to the censorship of the Comics Code Authority. The code was against supernatural and horror-based themes. Magazine Enterprises began playing down these elements. They canceled the Ghost Rider title and made him into a backup strip. Sales of Magazine Enterprises comic books dropped. In 1955, the Ghost Rider made his last appearance in Red Mask number 50. The entire Magazine Enterprise line came to an end in 1958. Artist Dick Ayers continued working for the surviving comic book companies. He found steady employment at one struggling publisher, Atlas. In 1961, Atlas changed their name to Marvel Comics Group. Ayers worked on many of the original Marvel superheroes. In 1967, he mentioned to Marvel editor Stan Lee that Ghost Rider's copyright was expiring. Within a year, a new Marvel Ghost Rider took to print. This time, lawman Rex Fury was replaced by another lawman, Carter Slade. The new Marvel character didn't take off like the original. The new Ghost Rider series was canceled after seven issues. In 1971, Ayers was freelancing for Skywall Publications. 
The Skywald line was made up of black and white horror titles that were published outside of the Comics Code Authority. That year, Skywald launched a Ghost Rider-inspired superhero called The Hell Rider. The Hell Rider was a modern motorcycle riding vigilante, and he was molded in the same vein as the original Ghost Rider. The Hell Rider was a creation of another former Marvel employee, Gary Friedrich. Ayers did not draw this character, although some of his art does appear in this time. The short-lived hero only lasted two issues. Friedrich and Ayers both returned to Marvel. In 1972, Friedrich would ride a new, updated, modern motorcycle riding Ghost Rider and pick up where the Hell Rider had left off. This time, the character was born in the occult. In this new interpretation, Marvel's original Ghost Rider was brought back as a secondary character and renamed the Phantom Rider. Ghost Rider artist Dick Ayers would spend his final years as a freelancer working for Marvel, DC, Archie, and AC Comics. He drew thousands of pages over a 50-year career in comics. In 1985, he received the Best Comic Book Award for illustration by the National Cartoonist Society. He was a regular on the comic convention circuit. He was a fan favorite and always made time to talk to fans and review the work of many young artists. His last work was published in 2007. Ayers passed away in 2014 at the age of 90. The amazing Frank Frazetta would leave comics to become the top fantasy illustrator of his generation. His artwork was used for albums, posters, and book covers. In the 1980s, a series of strokes left him with his right arm paralyzed. The amazingly talented Frazetta taught himself how to paint with his left hand and continued on for another decade. In 2003, he was the subject of a feature-length documentary, Frank Frazetta, Painting with Fire. Frazetta passed away in 2010. Writer Gary Friedrich went on to write many Marvel titles. He won the Alley Award for his work on Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. In the early 2000s, he sued Marvel over the intellectual property rights of the Ghost Rider. He lost initially, but his suit was settled out of court while the case was waiting on appeal. Thank you.